DC Comics have announced the next iteration of their Superman Superstars initiative. And when I recorded this video initially, the picture was really, really fuzzy and digitized. So we're going old school, thick and critical, like the first year and a half of the channel, where you're not really going to see my face anymore. You won't get to see all the flailing arms and my face turn red uh, if I'm making a point that I'm uh, really passionate about. Uh, you're just going to see pictures. I do apologize for that, but this is a, a great video. The audio was perfect, so I didn't want to waste that. So here we go. I'm sorry. This is all of this mug you're going to see until the very end. When DC Comics announced that Philip Kennedy Johnson was leaving Action Comics, it was for their Superstars of Superman or Superman Superstars Initiative, something like that. First up was Jason Aaron with his Bizarro story, which is, I think the first issue was good, and then it just kind of falls apart. There's a reason that you don't see a lot of really big epic stories with Bizarro. Interesting character, but you are limited in what you can do with him, and I don't think the turn the entire world into bizarro so that turns joker into like a super genius was the great twist in the story that probably jason aaron thought it could be next up we've had josh williamson obviously with house of brainiac half of it happening in action comics for this superstar initiative as well as the other half happening in superman we got another issue of that this week i think was superman is it 13 i think it's 13 i might be wrong on that one another good issue not quite as action-packed and awesome as Action Comics 1064, but but still really good in House of Brainiac. Uh, feels like it's actually going to do something leading into absolute power. And if you wanted to call Jason Aaron a superstar, I would take slide umbrage with it. He was probably a superstar at one point. I don't think he's been a superstar for a long time. Hasn't had really great sales on anything for, for quite some time, really, since the apex of his time on Thor. And that was a while ago. Everything has been trending down for that guy. But, you know, Batman Offworld is good. And he's doing decent work at, at DC. So if you want to call him a superstar, maybe with what's left, he is a superstar. Maybe he's one of the top 5%. Josh Williamson, I would say in this current environment, with this version of DC Comics and Marvel Comics, probably is a superstar, unfortunately. I think he's a really good writer. He's talented. He does good stuff. He cannot stick the landing on a comic book story if it's big. And he can't actually do events, which I think is a huge drawback for a superstar. But if you look at a guy that consistently sells well between Marvel and DC, he's the number one guy. That kind of tells you about the amount of talent available at Marvel and DC right now that there probably aren't any superstars. But we are learning, I guess, that this is going to go throughout 2024. There are going to be two more sets of superstars, Superman initiatives. We have the next superstar up i guess we're using superstar very loosely in a vince mcmahon type of setting here a uh, gail simone and rainbow Rowell. Rowell? I whatever it is rainbow the lady from she hulk are the next people up the next men up for superman superstars i had heard about six months ago that the plan after josh williamson i thought or at least th this is the way it was portrayed to me that phil kennedy johnson was actually going to come back onto action comics but then about two months ago, I heard that that wasn't the case anymore. They changed plans. And I think this all but confirms that Philip Kennedy Johnson not likely to return to Action Comics anytime soon, which I do think is a disappointment. Maybe he'll do some like House of L kind of stuff, maybe a miniseries here or there, but it doesn't sound like he's going to be on an ongoing Superman anytime soon. I find disappointing. But here's the facts that we do know. Gail Simone is returning to Superman for the next arc of Action Comics. The writer is teaming up with artist Eddie Barrows for Superman and the Challenge from the Stars, the third part of DC's year-long Superman Superstars initiative, which pairs the biggest writers and artists up to create distinct three-issue arcs. Simone and Barrows are not only the creators attached to these issues of Action Comics, joining them will be best-selling novelist Rainbow Rowell and artist Ian Tormey, who will be telling a backup story about Lois Lane, biggest writers in the industry. And I'm assuming this is like their profile or their sales numbers and all that thing. In 2024, you certainly don't think about Gail Simone. I don't think in 2014 you would think about Gail Simone. I don't think in 2010 you would think about Gail Simone. I don't think Gail Simone has ever been one of the biggest writers in comic books. She had a time where she was maybe C-list. Perhaps, maybe if you squinted really hard and turned your head, you could go, perhaps she's a B-list writer. And certainly not a superstar or really a big name, but somebody that could at least sell some comic books, maybe not on their name, but their name didn't drive people away. But it's been a long time since Gail Simone's even been that. You know, there was a time when Gail Simone was, was a pretty decent writer and had really good dialogue, but that's been a, a really long time at this point. And then Rainbow Rowell, who will be doing the backup story, you know, admittedly not exactly the headliner here, 
Rainbow Rowell's never actually sold any comic books. You know, she's been on She-Hulk for how long and no one cares about the series because she's not a, a superhero comic book writer. She's a like romance novelist, YA graphic novel novelist. I don't know. It's, it, she doesn't write stuff for boys. She doesn't write superhero stories. If you are interested in She-Hulk eating sushi with their friends, that's probably a good series to read. But if you would actually like to see She-Hulk being She-Hulk, probably not the best place to go. I am a big fan of Eddie Barrows. I think Eddie Barrows is absolutely undervalued. Fantastic artist. He's currently being completely wasted. But uh, let's not talk about that. At least he'll be doing something on Action Comics, which will be a, a bigger platform for him. Obviously, he illustrated the James Tynan Detective Comics run for quite some time. Did a great job on there. He also did, oh my goodness, what is it? Uh, Freedom Fighters at DC Comics, a miniseries written by Robert Venditti. If you've never read Freedom Fighters with the Eddie Barrows art written by Robert Venditti, I highly suggest that one. That was a great series. Going to be far, far better than what Gail Simone's likely to do on Action Comics or certainly Rainbow Rowell. And you do get some Superman in there as well. Well, at least you get Uberman, if you know what I mean. A, a dark, evil version of Superman in an alternate a multiverse. I think it's Earth-X. I might be wrong on that one. But a little bit more details on what Gail Simone is going to be doing in a statement, Simone relayed her excitement for the story, saying it's deliberately meant to echo my all-time favorite Superman time period and that it's unapologetically huge in scope and fun as hell. Superman and the Challenge from the Stars is meant to be a story set in Superman's early career, and it seems to take that literally on Barrows and Craig's cover. Clark's costume features a Superman shield with a black background, one he briefly wore decades ago. An alien race turns the Earth into a battle arena, forcing Superman to take on the threat alone. What does it even mean when you say it's unapologetically huge in scope? Who's ever asked anyone to apologize for writing a big story? This video is unapologetically great. Like, why would I apologize for that? It's such a stupid statement. And I don't know why people use this unapologetically amazing. No one would ever want you to apologize for writing something amazing. No one would ever want you... No one would ever want you to... No one would ever want you to apologize for making the world's greatest YouTube video or having the greatest a comic book YouTube channel and content available on YouTube. Why would I apologize for that? Unapologetically huge in scope. Uh, likely not to be huge in scope, although you do have aliens coming down. But just like the idea of what she's portraying there, Superman in a battle arena fighting aliens. I think I just read that for two years straight called War World Saga from Philip Kennedy Johnson in Action Comics, where he basically picked up Grant Morrison's chicken shit, made it into chicken salad and made a pretty damn good story out of it. Probably was a little bit too long, in my opinion, at least. I think he could have made it a little bit more brief, but otherwise it's a really good story. And it feels like she's just, I don't know, reproducing the story that was just released that people liked. I'll definitely like the Eddie Barrow's art, and I certainly like the Ricardo Federici art on the um, Warworld Saga story. So I, it doesn't feel like it's treading new ground. Cool, you've got an old school Superman logo that isn't exactly obscure, but it's not exactly like a popular version of the logo. Okay, you're making it in his early days. Maybe like a Batman Offworld, which is what Jason Aaron's doing with Batman, where he, you know, he's like in his first year of Batman trading, but he's out in space fighting aliens. That's actually a really good book. If you didn't read that one this week, I think you're just missing out and you're you're missing out on the opportunity to fall in love with Punchbot, which I never expected to actually happen here. I don't think many people be falling in love with anything Gail Simone on Superman. She's certainly written the character here and there over the years and done an OK, perhaps job uh, every once in a while. Uh, not anything too big here. And I do think it's a bastardization of the word, word superstars. Like no one thinks of Superman superstars and you're like, oh, man. It's got to be Gail Simone, right? Like, that's the name that just pops in my mind. They forgot to get any Superman superstars. Like, even Josh Williamson, he might be the biggest superstar in comic books, the big two right now, which I still think it, it's hard for me to say that because he's okay, but he's not great. He'd only been on Superman, like, six issues, I think, when they announced this. Not exactly a writer synonymous with the name Superman. So I, I just think... The entire initiative is just kind of worthless because when you hear Superman superstars, it makes you think maybe we're going to get a fucking Dan Jurgen Superman story. Maybe we're going to get a Peter J. Tomasi Superman story. Maybe we're going to get a Jeff John Superman story. Maybe somebody that's actually written the Superman story that people like. 
and now you're getting Gail Simone. So it's going down, down, down as far as the profile and quality of the rider over time. I guess 2024 is the year of Gail. Maybe Gail just remembered how to write comic books and be interesting again. Maybe she gave up social media or something. I'm not really sure what's happening, but a lot of people are putting a lot of faith in Gail Simone for reasons that I cannot see because there's been no sales there for over a decade. But that's what that is. As far as the rest of the information, Lois Lane gets her own action comic spotlight in 2024 with a new story by Rainbow Rowell and Cian Tormi. After her celebrated runs at Marvel Comics, Rowell, a best-selling romance writer in her own right, makes her DC Comics debut at a three-part action comics backup story starring DC's original love interest and leading lady. The three-part backup story will run through Action Comics 1067 to 1069. <laughs> her celebrated runs of Marvel Comics. I guess we all missed that part. I think, think she's... Has she done anything else besides She-Hulk? I think she might have done The Runaways or something. I don't know, some some girl title that they try to make something, and it turns out that Rainbow Rowell has no like fan base, in comic books at least. Maybe if she put out a romance novel, it would sell like hotcakes. Maybe if Rainbow Rowell crowdfunded a fucking girly like love book on on Kickstarter, it would do like a million dollars. But if she did a She-Hulk book on Kickstarter, it would do like, I don't know, $20,000 maybe. Nobody really cares. Uh, she's not an action writer. Put her on Lois Lane. Like, who gives a shit? I like Lois Lane, one of the best supporting characters in the history of comic books, let alone Superman comics. But do whatever you want. Have Lois Lane go to lunch with Jimmy Olsen a lot. Like, <laughs> who gives a shit? It's just a backup story. I don't really even read backup stories at DC Comics really anymore because I read Gotham Girl Interrupted. Remember that one? I read the Joker shit baby backup story. Um, and I read it like some of the Tom King Trinity stuff. And I was like, I'm just wasting my fucking life reading these stupid backup stories. So I'm kind of over the idea of even acknowledging they exist. But I guess in this case we will because she's one of the superstars of Superman, Superman superstars, Rainbow Rowell. She couldn't sell a fucking Spider-Man comic book with her name on it. It's absolutely hilarious that Marvel and DC are still trying to, like, will Rainbow Rowell and Teeny Howard and Stephanie Phillips into existence. Yeah, sure, they're on a lot of books, but nobody's reading them, and they always get canceled. Although, for some reason, they don't cancel the She-Hulk book despite it not selling anything. Maybe it, it must sell really well in trade, but I have look at the trade sales, and you never see She-Hulk. It's the weirdest thing. It's almost like uh, Marvel Comics refused to give up on it out of spite of their of their readers. Like, fuck you for not liking Rainbow Royale. Fuck you for not liking T.D. Howard. Screw you guys. Stephanie Phillips is the man. And then you're like reading the book. You're like, Jesus, somebody needs just some fucking basics in uh, superhero comic book writing. I would say all three of them and uh, well, and a lot of other people. Uh, Cena Grace would be another one. I'd certainly say Steve Fox. Oh, man, who's some other really shitty writers out there? Jackson Lansing and Colin Kelly. Those guys could use a, a fucking comic book writing 101 course. There's a lot of people out there that they're trying to force into being something that they'll essentially never be. Case in point, Rainbow Rowell, Superman Superstars Initiative. Gail Simone at least has had runs people acknowledge are good, uh, which is more than a lot of people that they're trying to force down your throats. And at least she's been in the industry for a couple decades now, maybe not quite a couple decades, but certainly a while. And at one point could actually spin some really damn good dialogue. Do I have high hopes for Action Comics, Gail Simone, Rainbow Royale, Action Comics, 1067 through 1069? Uh, absolutely not. What is it Dr. Phil says? The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Well, in the past, Rainbow Rowell couldn't write a fucking story to save her life. I'm going to assume that's how it's going to go moving forward. In the last decade, Gail Simone has written nothing anyone remembers or even points to as worth reading. I assume it will be the same going in through and out of 2024, whether it be on Action Comics or Uncanny X-Men. But they've basically ran out of superstars. So many people have turned these guys down because it's just not worth it anymore. And there are no superstars really left. Josh Williamson is probably the top of the heap at Marvel and DC right now. And that tells you everything you need to know about why this uh, makes no sense and why it doesn't matter. It's like there's no superstars left.
If you're looking for more conversations about comic books and Superman, especially because we are in House of Brainiac and it is very, very good, at least two issues into it, definitely check out Thinking Critical Patreon. We got all the comic book reviews, discussion that you could possibly handle over 32 hours of new podcasts every single month for your listening pleasure. There are different tiers that you can subscribe to to support the channel and me, and I really appreciate all that stuff. And right now we do have a promo where you can get the highest tier for free for a week and check out everything going on there. There's a link in the video description.